Good day everyone! In our previous lesson, we talked about atoms and its subatomic particles. For the recap, the subatomic particles of atoms are protons with a positive charge, electrons with a negative charge, neutron with a neutral charge. For today's lesson, we're going to talk about how do atoms become stable through chemical bonding. Talking about the elements, there are 118 known elements in our periodic table. But in reference to the substance existing here on Earth, there are even more than that number. This is because elements react with one another to form new substances. And these new substances are called compounds, which are totally different in terms of physical and chemical aspect from the original atom or elements to which they come from. Now, the question is, why do atoms or elements react with one another? That is because atoms need to become stable or what we call atomic stability. The stability of atoms depends on whether the outermost shells is filled with electrons. If the outer shells is filled with 8 electrons or if the valence electron is 8, then it is considered stable. While atoms with an unfilled outer shell are unstable and they will usually form chemical bonds with other atoms to achieve stability. Before we go further to chemical bonding, I would like you to know that there are group of elements that are already stable and they do not react with anything, and that is the group of noble gases. The noble gases are the elements in group 18 of the periodic table. For example, helium, neon, and argon are the first three elements that can be found in the noble gases. They are already stable because they already have 8 valence electrons except for helium, with only 2 valence electrons. Helium with atomic number 2 filled the first energy level with 2 electrons. As I mentioned in our previous lesson, the first energy level can hold a maximum of 2 electrons, so therefore, since helium filled the first energy level, with its maximum number of electrons, it is already stable. Electrons in the outermost shell or valence electrons have an essential role in chemical bonding. As I mentioned a while ago, those elements that doesn't have 8 valence electrons will undergo chemical bonding. So therefore, we need to know the valence electrons of the elements before we do chemical bonding. We all know that we can get the valence electrons by doing electron configuration. But do you know that by simply looking at the periodic table, you can determine the valence electrons of the element that belongs to family A. Now, let's take a look at the periodic table. Group 1A or the alkali metals have 1 valence electron. So all of these elements have 1 valence electron. Well, group 2A have 2 valence electrons, group 3A have 3 valence electrons, group 4A have 4 valence electrons, group 5A have 5 valence electrons, group 6A have 6 valence electrons, group 7A have 7 valence electrons, and group 8A, which is the noble gases, have 8 valence electrons. Aside from the valence electrons, we need to know if the elements is metals or non-metals. So here are the metal elements. And these are the non-metal elements. This ladder is what we call metalloids or the elements containing properties similar and midway between metals and non-metals. Now let's start with chemical bond. When we say chemical bond, it is the attraction between the atoms that enables the formation of compounds. For this lesson, we're going to focus on two types of chemical bond, which is ionic bond and covalent bond. Ionic bond involves the bonding between metal and non-metal, while covalent bond involves the bonding between two non-metals. Now, ionic bond happens when one atom transfer electrons to the other atom to become stable, while covalent bond 
involves sharing of electrons between two nonmetals. Now, in Lewis electron dot structures, ionic bond is represented by an arrow, or the transfer of electron is represented by an arrow. In covalent bond, the sharing of electrons is represented by a line. Ionic bond involves gaining and losing electrons. In doing so, the atom becomes charged particles and will now be called as ion. An atom that loses electrons becomes positively charged ion, which is called cation, and the one that gains electron becomes negatively charged ion, which is called an ion. Before moving on to how ionic bond happens, let us first find out how ions achieve charges. For example, let us consider atoms of sodium and chlorine. Sodium belongs to family 1A and therefore has a valence electron of 1. The half-shell notation of sodium reveals that it has an excess of 1 electron to be given away to make the number of the outermost shells equals to 8. Remember an atom need to have 8 valence electron to become stable. So therefore, the excess 1 valence electron of sodium has to be given away. As this happens, sodium will now become sodium ion with a charge of 1 positive. So what does the value of 1 positive mean? In neutral sodium, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. Thus, if sodium has 11 protons, the number of electrons is also 11. But once sodium given its one electron, the number of protons will now be more than the number of electrons by 1. Thus, charge 1 positive. A positive sign denotes the charge of proton and the value of 1 denotes the difference between proton and electron. This time, let us see what charge will chlorine atom have. Chlorine belongs to group 7A in the periodic table, which would mean that it has 7 valence electron. The half-shell notation of chlorine revealed that it has 7 electrons on its outermost shell. With that, what do you think will chlorine do to its 7 valence electrons? Again, to become stable, an atom must have 8 valence electrons. Since chlorine have 7 valence electron, it only needs 1 more electron. So instead of giving away the 7 valence electrons, chlorine will accept 1 electron from somewhere. So the number of electrons will now be more than the number of protons. As the chlorine atoms accept 1 electron, it will now become an ion with a charge of 1 negative. Now, to show the bonding between elements, we're going to use Lewis electron dot structure or LEDs. It is a representation of the valence electron of an atom that uses dots around the symbol of the element. The number of dots is equal to the number of valence electrons in the atom. In our previous example, sodium have one valence electron, so therefore we will have one dot for sodium to represent its one valence electron. For chlorine, with 7 valence electron, we're going to put 7 dots for chlorine to represent its 7 valence electron. These dots are arranged to the right and left, above and below the symbol, with no more than 2 dots on a side. It does not matter what order the position are used. Now, how are we going to show the ionic bond using Lewis electron dot structure? For a unique bond, the transfer of electrons is represented by an arrow. Again, a unique bond is the chemical bonding between metal and non-metal. In this example, sodium, which is the metal, will transfer one electron to chlorine to achieve stability. The energy needed to remove an electron from neutral atom is known as ionization energy. Ionization energy generally increases from left to right of the periodic table. Since sodium is at the left side of the periodic table, its ionization energy is low. Therefore, it is easy to remove its outermost electron. While chlorine accepts electron from sodium to have 8 valence electron, the transfer is made possible as the electron affinity is met. Its strength generally increases across and decreases as you go down the group. 
As sodium loses an electron and chlorine gains electron, both atoms now become stable resulting in a positively charged sodium ion and negatively charged chlorine ion. Let's have another example for a ionic bond. Let's have magnesium and oxygen. Magnesium belongs to family 2A so therefore for magnesium we're going to put two dots around its element symbol to represent its valence electron. While oxygen belongs to family 6A so therefore oxygen have six valence electrons and we're going to put six dots around its element symbol. Now to become stable, metals need to transfer all the dots, while for non-metal, the dots must be equals to 8. For this example, magnesium have 2 dots that needs to be transferred, while oxygen have 6 dots and needs to gain 2 dots to become 8. So therefore, magnesium will transfer 2 dots to oxygen and oxygen will accept the 2 dots from magnesium to achieve the 8 dots or 8 valence electrons. The chemical formula for this ionic bond is MgO. Now let's have another example. Let's have lithium and nitrogen. Lithium belongs to family 1A so therefore the valence electron is 1 and we're going to put 1 dot to represent the valence electron. While nitrogen belongs to family 5A and therefore the valence electron of nitrogen is 5 and we're going to put five dots around its element symbol to represent its valence electron. To become stable, lithium need to transfer the dot to nitrogen. Once transferred, the lithium is now stable. Now how about the nitrogen? Is it already stable? No, because nitrogen need to have eight valence electron and as of now, there are only six dots. 5 from its valence electrons and 1 from lithium. So what are we going to do? Yes, we're going to create another lithium. But how many lithium is needed for nitrogen to become stable? Yes, we still need 2 lithium. Now, is it already stable? Nitrogen now have 8 dots or 8 electrons. The chemical formula for this ionic compound is Li3N. The 3 represents that there are 3 lithium. Now let's proceed to covalent bond. It is a chemical bond formed from the attraction of two non-metals. Unlike ionic bond, elements involved in a covalent bond do not transfer electrons but instead they share electrons. In Lewis electron dot structure, the sharing of electrons is represented by line. When two or more non-metallic elements combine in covalent bonding, a molecule is formed. Now, these gases can occur in diatomic molecule. For example, oxygen. It has six valence electrons, so therefore, it needs two more electrons to become stable. The oxygen atoms will share two electrons from each other to obtain eight valence electrons. Oxygen will not give off its six valence electrons, but rather share its two electrons with another oxygen atom. In that way, both oxygen atoms will become stable. Now, let's have another example. Carbon and hydrogen. Carbon belongs to family 4A, so therefore, the valence electron of carbon is 4, and we're going to put 4 dots, while hydrogen have 1 valence electron. Carbon needs 4 more electrons to become stable, while hydrogen need 1 electron to become stable or to fill the maximum number of the first energy level, which is 2. Now, how many hydrogen do we need for carbon to become stable? Yes, we need 4 hydrogen. Now, is it already stable? Let us count if it is already 8. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So, carbon is now already stable. For hydrogen, all of these four achieve stability upon sharing 
electron to carbon. Now, there are three types of covalent bond that exist which depends on the number of shared electrons. These are single bond, double bond, and triple bond. Single bond denotes one bond or one line between atoms just like the bond between carbon and hydrogen. Double bond denotes two lines between atoms just like the bonds of two oxygen. Triple bonds denotes three lines between atoms, for example, the bond between two nitrogen atoms. Nitrogen have five valence electron and it needs three electrons to become stable. Nitrogen will not give off its five valence electron but rather share it three electrons with another nitrogen atom to become stable.